We're going <laughs> to Bitcoin land. All right, let's talk about Lightning. Let's talk about the Lightning Network, which is a uh, fast, speedy second layer on the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, big news today out of Lightning Labs, which raised $70 million to build a thing called Taro, which is this protocol that could one day allow widespread stablecoin uh, transfers uh, secured by the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, Lightning uh, has been around for a while now. Uh, it's long seen as something that makes Bitcoin faster, cheaper to use for payments and other functionality. This is a step in that direction to add functionality to the Bitcoin blockchain. This piece was capably written by our friend George Kaloudis. He sort of unpacks sort of the technical specs of what's what's being discussed here. Um, but yeah, the idea is that, hey, if we can add some additional functionality, stable coins, other sort of assets that can ride atop Bitcoin, but can be secured by the biggest blockchain uh, by market value in the world, that'd be a fantastic functionality to add. And Elizabeth Stark and her Lightning Labs team is looking to bring that to the table with a bit of open source software that could be incorporated across a number of Lightning implementations. So this comes ahead of the Bitcoin Miami conference, which is kicking off, I think, tomorrow with its first day of programming. Expect more Bitcoin related news out of Miami this week, I'd say. But this one is a nice table setter for what's surely to be a big week for the old orange coin. All right, Adam, you are back. I'm so happy you're back. But I'm going to throw it straight to Jen for her initial thoughts <laughs> on what is going on with Tarot. Yeah. So, okay. So Taro is not a stable coin, right? It's just the infrastructure to enable right. the movement of assets. And we still need to develop, develop those assets. And so we've spoken about this before. We spoke about NFTs possibly coming to the Bitcoin blockchain. And so my question for you guys is when we have Bitcoin, we have this legacy chain that's been around forever. And then we have all of these other chains that are popping up and they have these functionalities already. They have stable coins, they have NFTs. Is, is it a little late for the Bitcoin blockchain to be getting involved with this? Or is it actually a really amazing idea? Because when people think about crypto, when people learn about crypto, Bitcoin is the first thing you hear about. Adam, what are your thoughts? So I've been watching the kind of uh, lightning uh, technology for coming up on, I think, five or six years at this point. Um, you know, it's been long in development. Uh, it's been long sort of promised as kind of the return to the transactional type of Bitcoin. Uh, you know, that we had kind of in the early days uh, before there was a uh, split and you saw kind of the Bitcoin as we know it today become more of a reserve asset. So I think that uh, this is kind of the completion of a vision that's been long described. And to be clear, it's also not the completion of anything yet. It's yet another kind of layer of technology that's being built uh, that hopes to achieve this. Uh, Elizabeth Stark is a very capable person. Uh, I think that, you know, the project is in good hands. Uh, with her. But I think that that's kind of the challenge is that increasingly people just see Bitcoin as a reserve asset, right? Just see it as something that you buy and you sit on because, hey, maybe it takes over the world at some point. So I'm kind of skeptical that kind of the users will emerge for this. But Bitcoin does have a significant advantage in that it's the largest, it's the oldest, it's the original. And so if it really did introduce a, a very capable uh, you know, solution to really any of these problems, then I think that there would be people who would use it, especially if that solution, like Lightning, w included very, very low fees and very fast confirmation times, which have historically been challenges for the original blockchain. I'm just going to nod and, and Let's shimmy. talk about Taproot. <laughs> Let's talk about Taproot, though. So this, actually, this is enabled by Taproot, which is a big upgrade that came uh, came a few months ago. I don't know, several, several months ago. Uh, so this is some of the functionality that uh, that some of these Bitcoin uh, upgrades can can ultimately bring to the table. So I'm just curious, uh, you know, again, this is open source. This uh, is something that could be rolled out and incorporated into various Lightning Network implementations. It's going to probably start with Lightning Labs and their version of the thing, but there's others out there that are looking to bring, you know, increased payments functionality and other cool stuff to Bitcoin. So it's going to be interesting to see if, uh, if some of this technology, this particular protocol, gets baked into some of the other lightning implications, implementations that exist on the market. 